guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays and Nays. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, I am back into recording videos, sort of real time, if you will. Um, it is February 11th on Monday, and you guys will see this on Thursday. So, I am doing a little bit better. Um, I'm still taking things a little bit easy. You guys know what happened if you guys saw my previous video on my um, Christian nonfiction book haul. Um, and if you guys follow me in the Facebook group. But um, we just had my grandmother's funeral. So that's, you know, still hard. Um, especially since I was like highly active in it and stuff. Um, and I'll probably do a sort of story time on that video I guess I don't know but um this video since we're all about books and I didn't get a chance to record my February reads and studies um just because February is one a short month and two I just had so much going on um so I wasn't able to record that video so I will have one for March though for sure for sure but um yeah I'm going to be sticking with the whole theme of books and sharing with you guys my top eight reads that are Christian nonfiction from 2018 and then I also have one for my biblical fiction novels that I read um so yeah this is going to be on my top eight Christian nonfiction books of 2018 so I'm gonna go through my eight favorite reads from last year I read over a hundred books if I'm not mistaken last year I can't even tell you guys actually yes I can I have my book journal right behind me so here's my book journal and um, my goal for last year was to read um, at least 10 Christian nonfiction books and I think I did read 10 well not 10 completely but I read enough and um, I read 175 books last year so you know of that I wanted to at least read 15 that were Christian based, 5 that were at least biblical and then 10 that were, um, when I say biblical I mean biblical fiction and then at least 10 that were Christian nonfiction. and I did pretty well on that. Um, so I'm going to share my top 8 um, and this is in no specific order I'm just going in the way of the order that I read them and um, that's pretty much how it's going to go. So the first book I have is called Anywhere Faith by Heather C. King. I read this with Our Daily Bread. They do a book club almost every other month or every two, three months. Um, and this one is about overcoming fear, insecurity, and excuses and how to say yes to God. And um, I totally enjoy this. As you can see, I tapped it up. Um, I marked it up, highlighted it. This was a really great interactive book. I like this because there were questions. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't do the questions. I think I did the questions for like the first three chapters or so um but let me just quickly show you guys how this yeah I think I did it for the first four chapters actually I think once I got to chapter five I didn't yeah once I got to chapter five I stopped but basically um each chapter focuses on something different so I'll run quickly through it um you know could you run the pack could you run that past me again? Who's behind luggage? Are you sure this is safe? Um, you know, the chapters are in forms of questions that we tend to ask ourselves when it comes to saying yes to God. Um, and then what she does is after each chapter, she gives you a section called write it. So she gives you a verse, a scripture to write, but then you are to write the scripture in your own handwriting. So it's basically scripture writing, but you can also plug in your name where it can be put. And then there are five questions. It's called Think and Talk About It. So she basically goes through um, whatever the chapter discussed, and she gives you questions to really ponder and think about to relate the chapter to yourself. Um, because a lot of the time she's referring to um, biblical people, people in the Bible, if that makes sense, um, to make you understand. So... For the could you run that past me again? She talked about Gideon and God, so um, that's what was that. That's what that was about. And then she gives you this section called Pray It, which is a prayer. Um, and I think that was it. No, then she gives you an application as well. So I really, really enjoyed this. There was a lot of scriptures in this, and my favorite thing in this whole entire book was the prayer. And it's actually a prayer that I put in all of my Bibles. Um, I write literally everywhere. I have it on my wall. I'm trying to find it. So she found a poetic prayer that was written by David Livingstone, um, and it is, Lord, send me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. Sever any tie but the tie that binds me to thyself. So I just, I don't know, there's something about this book that really allows you to um, overcome fear, overcome anxiety, and allows you to say yes to God. Now, obviously, you're yes, sometimes you're going to be nervous, but um, 
she really finds a way to relate it to you so i'll just read the back of what it says it says um availability is what matters to god not ability so it's about you being able to say yes and not what you're able to do for him because god will equip you um but it says most of us want to live faith-driven obedient lives yet something holds us back fear insecurity busyness if success depended on us and our own abilities we'd be doomed to failure we're not smart enough, big enough, trained enough, capable enough, and the list goes on and on. Thankfully, God sees us through the filter of grace and calls us enough in Christ. We're not that different from the people in the Bible. Abraham, Moses, Esther, she talks about Gideon. She, she literally goes through so many people in the Bible. Um, it says, we look at these biblical heroes and think, I could never do that. But without God's leading and power, they couldn't have either. They were just regular men and women living out their faith. Their ability, sorry, their availability and utter dependence on God changed everything. Build the kind of faith, build the kind of relationship with God that lets you say, yes, Lord, I will, even while your knees are knocking. It's about being honest with God regarding your fears and your excuses. It's about dialogue and relationship with him. It's about how we answer him when we simply, I'm sorry, when he simply asks us to trust. So it's just about you being open um, to God saying yes to God even in the midst of your fear and even in the midst of your anxiety because even when you're afraid you can say no and not do it but there's a difference when you're afraid and you trust God to help you with your fear and say yes to him and I know for me that's pretty much where I am in um, currently like in the season is like there are a lot of things that need to take place and I'm terrified like I am terrified I mean there are so many things personally um within the various relationships I've had relationships I have with like family friends and even in my relationship with my son's father and then also with um within the church there's a lot of things that I'm supposed to be saying yes to and I'm scared I'm not gonna lie I'm very scared but um I'm still going to be open to say yes even though I'm scared because I know that God can help me with those um fears and anxieties that I might have so I really did enjoy this book I actually have a backup because I want to reread this book and I want to take new notes on it I just I don't know if I'm gonna reread this copy because I kind of broke the spine I don't know if you're gonna I'm gonna read it so but I I basically broke the spine of my book um if you guys can see just because I loved it so much it's a really really good book I highly recommend it so if you guys are interested in it, I will leave a link down below for you guys to check it out on Amazon and christianbook.com but that is the first book anywhere faith yeah anywhere faith by Heather C. King the next book was actually a book club read with Daughter of Increase that was hosted by my sis Angela from Transform Through God's Word. And that is the battle plan for prayer. And I believe they're doing this in her group right now, or they did it already. But um, this is by Alex and Stephen Kendrick. They are the creators of War Room. They're the creators of Fireproof, um, uh, Grace Card. They have a whole bunch of movies. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of their movies soon because I do own, I think I own all of them, if not most. Um, but yeah, they're the creators of that. And this book is just all about prayer, different strategies you can do. And um, I think there are 30 or 40 strategies, 35 strategies, actually. Um, and it's this book is amazing. <laughs> like, oh, my God. So it talks about um, the legacy of prayer, the power of prayer and the priority of prayer. Then it goes into basic training, the, you know, the five W's and one H, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, how about prayer. Then it talks about conditioning for prayer, the different strategies of prayer, the targets of prayer, so how to pray for the lost, for believers, for family, for authorities, for laborers in the harvest, for churches and revival. Um, and then they give you this section for ammunition, which are basically different appendixes. So you have spiritual ammo. They talk about they talk about the names of God, starting a prayer ministry, um, prayer strategy versus the gospel, spiritual temperature tests, um, and different things. And I think this is highly effective if you are one new to praying and don't know where to start or even if you're seasoned in praying and just want to continue to understand prayer a bit more this book is so essential and so great there is a bible study that goes with this and we did do the bible study with the book club it was so fun i enjoyed this there are dvd um, studies with this and i just i loved everything about this you guys the prayers in this was so profound i i, I just i loved it all as you can see i used three different book <laughs> page markers because I was like writing out I marked stuff at the top um this just was amazing I don't really know what else to say there are like in the back there are like different things you can pray um for like your husband for yourself your children your pastor your ministers at church your governments um 
other believers, those who don't know Christ and stuff. And I, I honestly, I'm not going to lie, I forgot about this stuff. Um, the prayers and the verses that was in here, and I actually need to keep this out. Because um, this is something I could definitely use right now with what I'm going through. And uh, the, the, what is, the growth, I guess, the growth and elevation that I'm currently in within the season. It's hard to explain the season that I'm in right now because it's like all over the place. But um, it's a good season. It's... A very scary season, but it's a good season, and I think this is something that I need to just keep out with me. I totally enjoy this, and I do want to thank my sis Angela um, from Transform Through God's Word for even, you know, talking about this book. Because if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would have gotten it. Um, I knew about it from watching the movie and stuff like that, but I never cared. I, like, I cared to get it, but I never took the plunge to get it. And if it wasn't for her saying, let's do this as book club, I probably would not have gotten it. So... Thank you, sis. And um, this is the second book. The third book I have for you is more of like a resource. Um, for me, it was an okay read just because a lot of the stuff I already knew. But I still loved it and the stuff that it uh, provided, the knowledge it provided, even though it was stuff that I knew, if that makes sense. But uh, it's Women of the Word by Jane Wilkin. This is a how a guide. It says how to study the Bible with both our hearts and our minds. And it just basically goes through studying the Bible with different methods. Um, she calls them the five P's, I think. Is it five P's or four P's? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five P's. So purpose, perspective, patience, process, and prayer. Um, those are the, the five different P's. And she literally just walks you through it. And I love it um, because her method is pretty much the method that I do with the Bible journaling. And inside you have like a sample of that. So it's really great. I enjoyed it. Again, I highlighted and marked some things out there. Some things I didn't know. Um, some things that I thought were quite interesting. There is a Bible study that goes with this you can download, and I don't have my copy, but I'll leave a link if I can find the Bible study. And if not, I'll upload it probably to Dropbox and leave a link down below for you guys to download because there is a study guide that goes with this, and I think it's, you know, great. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, if you go to crossway.org backslash Wilkins study, you can download the free study guide for the women of the word. Um, so I'm going to leave this link down below for you ladies. Um, but yeah, this this was an interesting story. I think if you're new to studying the Word of God, um, or even if you're not new but you're looking for a new method, this would probably be a good book to um, pick up because it really just goes through uh, five P's of studying the Bible, and I think they're essential. Personally, I do this already. Um, I just don't call them the five P's. I just call it Bible journaling. But um, it's essentially literally the same thing because she does the same method. Like literally, again, showing you the page. Here's the page. Um, so yeah, she's circling, she's underlining, she's, you know, making her marks, she's taking notes on the side, so, and I think in the, yeah, in this, she was using the ESV translation, um, Bible, so I mean, this was a great book, again, this is Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin. My fourth book is, I can't really call it a fourth book because this was like a favorite from 2017, but I reread it in 2018, and I'm probably gonna read it again in 2019, but this is literally going to probably be number one in my heart up there with Fervent. And that is going to be Cling by Kim Cash Tate. I love this book. It is so good. It is amazing. I read this with the ladies in the group. Um, it is so good. If you guys are ever interested in joining the book clubs, I do the book clubs on Facebook. I know a lot of you guys have told me you don't have Facebook. Um, so I started to do... Uh, set like video session video discussions i guess of the books that we read um so that i could upload them here but i'm going to try to find a way to get on youtube live um to do some stuff as well but um yeah this is choosing a lifestyle of intimacy with god and it's just about drawing closer to god clinging to god in the midst of you know hardships in the midst of doubt clinging to him in all times um through prayer through studying the word of god through meditating on scripture just everything is amazing she's actually coming out with her uh her series she kind of made like a mini I don't even know what to call it. It's a mini series um, entitled Cling, and I can't wait for that to come out because I am a fan of her stuff. I love her Bible studies. Kim Cash Tate is amazing. Again, her name is Kim Cash Tate because I know a lot of you guys always ask me what is her name because I probably talk too fast. Um, and if I talk too fast, I'm sorry. I was on debate for like a year, so I've just grown and learned to talk pretty much fast. Um, but yeah. This book is everything. This is the second time I'm reading this. I have my other copies somewhere up there. But, um, yeah, this is the second time I've read this book. I love this book so much. Like, I write, I highlight, I mark, I put stickers, I write prayers out. Like, you don't, you guys don't understand how much I love this book. I love it so much. This is definitely an essential book that I need to continually read every year, once a year, because it is so powerful. Um, and Kim is just amazing as a Bible teacher. Um, I love watching her Bible studies on YouTube. She's done some on Ephesians. She's done First and Second Samuels. She's done Ruth. I think she's preparing one on John, or she 
did the one on John. She's just um, editing it, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I just, I love listening to her teach the word of God. It's so amazing, so amazing. So, Cling by Kim Cash Tate. Definitely, uh, if I had to pick out of all of these books, this is number one. Like, if I had to put them in, like, numerical order, this would be number one. Because this is the second time I'm reading this, and I loved it just as much as the first time I read it. So, highly recommend this book. This book I have for you is one that kind of surprised me, and it's actually geared towards younger women. Um, but this helped me a lot with some things that I went through in my past. So, I definitely recommend it for adults. Um, truly do. And that is Lies Young Women Believe by Nancy DeMoth. Wolgameth and Donna Gresh. Sorry, I had to make sure I had her name right. Um, and this is just, you know, the lies that young girls believe um, and the truth that sets them free. It's all about breaking the uh, lies that we tend to believe in our lives growing up. And I mean, there's lies about God, like how God is not enough, um, how he should fix all your problems and how he's just like your father, which isn't true. Um, there's lies about Satan, how everything bad that happens is spiritual warfare. Because no, everything that bad, everything bad that happens is not spiritual warfare. Sometimes it's just consequences for our own stupidity. Um, you know, lies about ourselves that beautiful girls are worth more. Lies about sexuality, like um, it's not really sex when you. Basically, the it's not really sex is like how I know growing up when I was younger, um, people would always say, oh, oh sex isn't sex, but it is sex. Um, how you can't handle the loneliness of staying pure. There's lies about faith, lies about sin, lies about media, lies about the future, lies about relationship. It just, it really dives into different lies and, um, the different parts of those lies that we tend to believe. And for me personally, it really helped me, uh, see some things of my younger self and be able to sort of begin the process of breaking free from that. Um, I enjoy this so much. There is a woman's version of this called Lies Women Believe, and there's one for men called Lies Men Believe, and there's actually a, a another one coming out this year called lies little girls believe and i can't wait for that one to come out because i'm going to read that one as well because i feel like reading these two before reading the one for women is going to be beneficial for me um especially with the past that i have it will help me to break free from a lot of the things that i experienced so um i love this so much and i did this i did read this with my sister and my sister and I are still reading it. Um, we're still going through it, but I finished the book. And I, I loved everything about this. Um, there are tons of different scriptures in the back scripture cards. There is a Bible study that goes with this. We're doing the Bible study um, as well. It's, it's very powerful for little girls. But I think if you've had um, either a traumatic experience as a teen, if you've gone through some heartbreaks, heartaches as a teen... Um, or if you've done things in your past, in your teen years, that you're not proud of, this book will bring those memories up, but it will help you to release those memories and um, seek God. This did so much for me, guys. When I was reading this book, I just felt so free and so open, and um, I just felt the love of God. It was, it was really, really a great read, and I totally recommend it. So, Lies, Young Woman Believe by Nancy Dumas, Wilgamuth, and Donna Grush. The sixth book I have is The Woman's Guide to Spiritual Warfare, How to Protect Your Home, Family, and Friends from Spiritual Darkness by Quinn Shearer and Ruth Ann Garlick. And this was actually a shocker. So this was a book that I heard about, wanted to get, but then opted not to because it reminded me exactly of Fervent. Like Fervent by Priscilla Shire is what this book reminded me of. But then someone commented and told me that it's definitely not the same. So my mom ended up getting a copy and then she bought me the co a copy. So she actually like signed my copy for me. Um, and when I read it, you guys, this is definitely, definitely not like fervent. Fervent for me is more of like, um, a beginner prayer kind of book. This, however, goes into spiritual warfare, which is a little bit more of an intense kind of prayer life. And, um, this book was everything. I loved it. I have marked all the prayers up. I wrote a lot of these prayers out and personalized them. Like it was so. I mean, I don't even think I have them in here. I think I took them out and put them in my uh my little Bible, my my scripture Bible. I think I did. But like it was so so good. The scriptures in here, everything. It says this. There is a spiritual war going on, and God has given women a key position on the battlefront. And the different chapters is like um. What our spiritual wardrobe should look like, how strong can a woman be, our weapons and strategy, opening a door to the enemy, I'm sorry, an open door to the enemy, breaking bondages, fighting for your marriage, fighting for your children, um, lessons from the fields, and just... 
this book will empower you as a woman. It has an arsenal of scriptures for spiritual warfare. There's prayers and declarations based on scriptures in the back. I mean, it, this, 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 this is amazing. If you're looking, here is the arsenal for scriptures. So, like, they go for, like, uh, for authority over the enemy, for dealing with an abusive husband, for guidance, for children, um, for healing, for the nation, for a new job. Oh, I need to look at those. Um, for peace of mind, for protection, for wayward family members, for those in authority, for strength and declaration, for sleeplessness, um, on why to pray, for weariness and depression, for provisions and finances. And then they give you prayers um, uh, you know, against counterattacks, um, authority over the enemy for your children, a hedge of protection for guidance, for help when you're in a hurry, um, opposing satanic harassments, for favor, for finances, for breaking curses, for financial lack, for elections, um, for day-to-day -day family life, for a declaration of victory, for marriages, for nations, for false religions, for praise, I mean, for terrorism, for youth, for suggestion, it, it, it goes on and on. I love this. I think I did a video on this. I'm not sure if I did. You can click the on the screen if I didn't, then I probably was supposed to, but never did. Um, but yeah, I love this book. Um, it was really, really good. It was so amazing. This is definitely, this is one of those books along with Cling and along with Fervent that I feel like I need to read once a year. Um, also I need to like keep out a set of books that will keep me focused on prayer and scripture. So, highly recommend this book so much. The seventh book is one that I thought was, it came at such an interesting time in my life when I needed it. Um, this was actually a review book. I think, yeah, all of the other ones I actually like purchased uh, myself but this one I did receive for free for review um, from Baker Books yeah Baker Books and um, this is from Dr. Larry Crabb it is when God's ways make no sense and this book came at a very crucial time um, when I was dealing with some stuff and it, it, it was hilarious to me when this arrived in the mail because I was literally in my mind thinking like God never makes sense and then this book showed up and it took me about five months to read this book um, just because when I first started reading, I like when I first started reading it, I loved it. Um, I mean, I was marking and underlining and highlighting. You know, I was taking notes at the end of each chapter. But then I fell off with reading it because I just, I don't know, it just was too much going on. Then I said, you know what, let me get back into this book. And you guys, this really talks about the things we as Christians don't like to talk about, the things that we don't like to question. And um, a lot of people think it's wrong to question God, but it's not wrong to question God depending on your heart. If your heart is in the right place, then it's okay. I mean, look at Job. He questioned God, um, but his heart was never in a very... Um, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, Job's heart was never in a sinful way. He questioned God trying to understand him because what he went through didn't make any sense. And that's kind of how I felt. Um, and sometimes I still feel. It's like certain things I don't understand. Um, and I think it was, you know what, yeah. So this came right about the time when um, God basically gave me an opportunity for a job. Literally, he put the job in my lap. And um, I did the interview and everything went well. And I was basically told at the interview um, audition that I was going to get the job. And it was to work at a, um, work with a makeup company. If you guys don't know I'm a freelance makeup artist, I love doing makeup. Um, I find my purpose in helping women feel beautiful. Um, and I talk to women. And I know someone's going to comment like, oh, makeup this, makeup that. But my philosophy is that you don't need a lot of makeup on your face. I don't cake my clients with makeup. Um, my philosophy is using a little bit of makeup just to enhance the things that are already, you know, that are already there. To enhance your eye color if you choose to. Sorry about that, guys. My first lady had literally just called me, so I had to answer that. But, um, I don't even know what I was saying. But, yeah. Um, this book really just asks the questions that we don't like to ask as Christians. And, um, it answers them. And I, I tell you, this book was amazing. Um, here we go. So, oh, that's what it talks about. So, it goes through three different people in three different ways we can, um, kind of answer God's like not answer but deal with God when he makes no sense so you can either resist and run and he goes through the story of Jonah and we all know Jonah was the prophet that ran away from God um and then we can distort and deny how Saul did and this is a Saul that um became Paul and we know that Saul um he took pieces of the gospel that he resonated with and got rid of like the other pieces of the gospel um, and then the other thing we can do is tremble and trust, and then he talks about Habakkuk. Um, I personally don't know much about Habakkuk, which is why I kind of enjoyed this, but um, 
it really just put a lot of things in perspective for me and I really enjoyed his breakdown of Jonah Saul and um, Habakkuk now I know about Saul who doesn't know about Saul I mean we all know he was killing Christians obviously um, but then I also know about Jonah because I had to prepare the notes for the Jonah Bible study that we're gonna be doing um, but Habakkuk I didn't know much about and this book just uh, it, it it did something for my spirit and I would highly suggest if you're in a season of not really understanding what it is that God has for you or understanding the things that um, God wants for you oh that's what I was talking about so yeah um when I had received this it was after um, God basically gave me an opportunity and I had uh, audition and interview for the job and at the interview and audition everything went well um, basically also I was gonna get the job and then two days later they called me and told me that I didn't get the job um, and it kind of broke me because I haven't worked since 2012 um, well 2013 my last job was 2012 I was working at Macy's um, at the, in the beauty section working on call um, but I mainly worked a lot with Lancome and I grew a really great relationship with the people at the Lancome counter I also worked with Estee Lauder and Clinique and Clarence um, and even with Chanel so I was working with you know luxury brand makeup and um, perfume and stuff and I loved my job so much I was at work almost every day I was working overtime like I loved it so much and because I was on call I can just pick up wherever there were extra hours and a lot of the people at the long comb counter were always off because they were older so I was picking up their hours and um, you know having not worked for so long I said you know I wanted to work but I ended up getting pregnant with my son and had my son in 2014 then I said I'll work in 2015 when he turned one that never worked so things just didn't pan out and when he finally, you know, put this opportunity on my life, there's like literally so many opportunities he gave me. The opportunity to work in a hair salon with my own booth, that lasted for a while. And um, I haven't heard back from the lady for a minute. So it's just like, you know, he gave me a lot of these opportunities and then he takes them away. And it's just like, I don't know. And um, I know now, like looking at it now concerning the job that he was going to give me around my birthday, um, it would not have been a great thing for me to take because I would have had to move in with my um, son's father and you know it, it just it would not have been what I truly wanted um, and you know sometimes he has to say no sometimes he has to deny you sometimes he makes you wait and I don't always understand it and this book truly just opened my eyes a lot more and it makes me question things it makes me question God but when I question him I go to scripture to understand um, so yeah, I, I'm i rambling on about this book. I loved it. Totally recommend it. The last book I have for you is The Ruth Anointing by Michelle McLean Walter. I don't know why I was about to say Deborah, but um, Michelle McLean Walters. I love this book so much, you guys. I enjoy all of her books. I don't know if you guys can see her books right here. Um, I have Esther, Deborah, and Anne. I don't know if you guys can see it. But we have Ruth, and I love this one so much. This is Becoming a Woman of Faith, Virtue, and Destiny. And she really just dives into the whole story of Ruth, breaking it down. And I think the thing that I enjoyed the most was um, the breakdown of the whole threshing floor scene, as well as the uh, part where Ruth basically made her commitment and vow to both Naomi and God. <sighs> Loved it. So good. If you're looking for a book that breaks down... Um, a book of the Bible or specifically a book of Ruth um, but will also make it easy for you to apply that actual book or chapter to your life definitely check out her books her books are really amazing um, I, I personally love the story of Ruth because it goes beyond just a romance between Nao, um, Ruth and Boaz it, it just it goes into so much more and I love it so much and this book just made me love the story even more and this book makes me want to restudy the book of Ruth even more which I will be doing again this year I'm gonna definitely restudy probably not on YouTube um, probably just do a personal restudy of it because I just I love the story of Ruth and I feel like every time I study it I'm learning something new in this book um, though a lot of the stuff I kind of knew it definitely did help me get some new points so um, I loved it definitely recommend it the Ruth anointing by Michelle McLean Walters so those were the eight books you guys again my top would have to be cling um, by Kim cash Tate. that's definitely like number one right up there with number one um, my second would probably be ooh, the battle plan for prayer and then my third would probably be the spiritual warfare book 
um, just because those books are just, they're focused on prayer and building your relationship with God and just being intimate and close with Him, I think it's profound and amazing. But um, I think that's it for now, you guys. Let me know what you guys enjoyed last year. Um, if you guys have any recommendations for new books, because I'm always looking for new books. Obviously, I have all of these books to read. Obviously. But um, you won't pray for me that I get to them. And again, my bookshelf tour is coming. It's coming. It, it was supposed to be up in February. But with everything that has gone on, I wasn't able to do it. So I'm hoping by the end of March I can have it for you guys. Because I want to edit it and make sure it's great. Um, so yeah, that is it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.